everybody, this is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with a Wargaming in Miniature video. We're continuing on with my SPQR project. Uh, I'm painting some Gallic warriors. Uh, I just finished painting my Romans, and I experimented with a new way to paint flesh. Uh, I found it uh, was a little bit smoother looking it looked a lot better and it was actually a it's not a faster method but it took about the same amount of time so I figured if I go ahead and take it the same amount of time which for me is pretty fast and it produces better results I think that's a good thing so uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to paint this Gallic warrior and I picked him because he's got a bare chest and exposed arms uh, he's wearing pants, of course, but <clears throat> you're going to be able to see the muscle definition and the uh, the shadows and stuff like that on the flesh. Which one? Okay. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about what we're going to be doing. In the past, what I had done is I would use a light flesh, like a very light tone, and then I would apply a dark wash on top of it. It would cause the model to be 100% dark. And then what I would do is I would paint like a flesh tone on top of that, or I would dry brush a flesh tone on top of that to kind of give it, uh, bring out the details of the model and what that looked like was brush strokes, a chalky. It didn't look very. Um, it it made the model look like he was painted and not. Um, I don't know. It just didn't look very. I want. I'm not. I I resist the the use of the word realistic, but it did. It, it basic and plus remember these models are not going to be up close and personal on the camera like this. They're going to be three feet away at arm's length on the table. So you want them to look good from a distance, right? And be able to withstand someone picking up your heroes and saying, hey, does this guy look good? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to combine that first step. Remember the light flesh and the wash? We're going to combine that into one quick step. Now, I considered using wood brown because this is a brown that has a little bit of red tint. This is very similar to the old Citadel dark flesh, right? When you're painting African-Americans or actually Africans, uh, this would have been a great color to use as your highlight color. Uh, and, but I found uh, in my folk art something almost identical to it called burnt sienna. Let's put this wood away. No, nope, let's not. Let's leave the wood out. The burnt sienna, if you can see on camera, is very slightly lighter, right? It's a little bit lighter. Not much, but just enough that I decided I was going to use the burnt sienna. Now, because I'm only painting one model, I don't. I'm only going to be painting this one model. I don't need to put a ton of paint in there. You wouldn't need to anyway, but uh, we're going to paint all the flesh burnt sienna. And this is for a Caucasian. And I'm painting in all the details, all the surfaces, his hands his biceps, his pecs, his trapezius muscle, his, his abs, all the way down and maybe a little bit over onto the pants. And this is uh, This can be used on, actually, you can, you can even cut this step even one step further uh, or 
let me rephrase that. You could cut this technique to just one step further uh, and paint the brown and then just dry brush the lighter flesh tone, whatever flesh tone you wanted to be your primary flesh tone and go with just that. Uh, but that's not what I... I prefer the... Uh, like like I said, dry brushing leaves streaks, makes it look powdery. And I didn't want that. Okay, so we're going to paint over his little necklace, his back, making sure to get it into all the details. Make sure you get it underneath in his hands, which I didn't do this. Now remember, this hand is going to be carrying a shield, so this fist part of the, the front part of the hand, I really don't concern myself with uh, in this process because I'm going to be gluing a shield to that hand and covering the fist part of it, the knuckles. Okay, so he's painted brown. Uh, I'm going to give this a couple of minutes to dry, and then we will be back. Uh, and Now, if you were painting an army, uh, this is the time when you would paint your next figure brown. And then you would paint the next figure after that brown, and the next figure after that brown. And when you got about ten figures painted, then you would be ready to come back to this figure. So you could do a whole war band at one time. All right, so let, but but since we're only doing one for you on the video, let's give it about 10 minutes and then I will be right back. All right, now that this guy is dry and you can kind of see the um, detail a little bit easier on the brown, uh, there's a lot of debate on what the base primer color should be. A lot of people say prime white, that way your colors are pure, you know, that you get what you paint on your model. Um, there's people that say paint gray because it's a neutral color and you can go up or down from gray. And then there's people like me that say prime black because uh, you want to start dark and work your way up from that. Plus, um, I'm, I'm a speed painter. I, I paint armies um, either to sell on eBay or to war game with uh, for my personal collection. And I like, when I, when I get my mind to it and I say, okay, I want to paint a squad of Germans, right? I want to do that in one night. I don't want to take all week to paint a squad of Germans. So I'll, I'll go quickly and I'll paint quick. And a lot of times uh, I will leave a gap between colors. Like if there's a belt and a pant or a sheath and a belt, I'll leave a very, very, very microscopic gap between them. One reason is to prevent me overpainting. And two, because I want to leave what's called a black line. And if you have a black line, it accentuates the colors between the two, and it looks like you've actually done a better paint job than you've actually done. Okay, but in this, that's not what we're talking about. In this one, uh, we are going to... Imagine if I had a bunch of models like this, and I primed with that color. That would be perfect, because then I would just paint the pants and I would already have the skin tone pre-primed already, right? Pre-prepared or pre-base coats. Uh, okay, so okay, so now before before I can before I go on, um, some people are visual learners, some are verbal learners, some are uh, learn as you do, hands-on as they call it. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of explain this in an alternate way, right? So now what we're gonna do is I'm going to draw a peck. I'm going to draw my uh, face. I'm drawing this very crudely, just yeah, it's a skeleton, right? Yeah. Uh, there we 
There's the stomach, there's the belt, there's his body, and then he's got his biceps, his underarms. Okay, so you get a general idea, right, of what the model's going to look like, right? That's this guy right here. Okay. He's got a helmet on. Okay, so I've painted the whole thing brown. But before we do that, let me let me kind of jot down right here. We have a we have a primer coat, right? Which I primed to black. Okay, that's that was my primer coat. Now the next coat is not the base coat. It's what's called an undercoat. Undercoat is my brown. Now, you want to use a reddish brown or a brown that has a little bit of a red tint into it because it's more fleshy. Okay. All right. That's my undercoat. And then what we have is our baseline or base coat. Our baseline is the middle of the process. It's where you can go up and down from. So, our base coat is going to be medium flesh tone, right? So I'm going to put medium. Okay, so that's going to be our base coat. And then there's going to be, uh, and this is going to be, uh, what do we call it, layered. So there's going to be layers of medium. You can use other colors. You can bring... Uh, certain colors like red, uh, you can use lighter and lighter colors of red to bring up the, the uh, accentuated details. But in flesh, I'm just going to use more medium. And then my final, uh, you could call it a highlight. Or, or a uh, like a top coat almost, but this is going to be skin tone, right? Skin tone is a lot lighter than medium flesh tone. Not as light as light flesh. That's even lighter. So you can kind of see there's a gradual progression. This is too light. In my opinion. Now, if you were doing a female, I would, and I'll show you, I would use more skin tone and maybe even jump into the light flesh tone uh, for, for uh, female skin tones. Okay, so we're just going to call this skin tone. Okay. Now, the application of this paint is, well, you just saw the brown, so you know how much paint is going to go on the brown. So, we did that. We've done that. Now, our base tone, which is mid, we're going to water it down. We're going to water it down. I'm, For me, model color is a pretty strong pigment. Uh, I thought about going 3 to 1, 2 to 1, 5 to 1. I heard some people go f as as low as 5 to 1. Uh, it, it gets too runny, in my opinion, at 5 to 1. And then there are people that say, well, if it's runny, wipe it off on the paper towel and then apply it. Uh, and it'll be thin but not runny because the water won't be there. Well, if the water's not going to be there anyway, why, why, why thin it out to draw to draw out the water? Because that doesn't make sense to me. So that's what that's what the uh, experimenting was on the Romans, and it worked well. So what I'm going to go is a two to one. This is water, and that's paint. Okay, uh, and then once I get that. Um, we're going to cover uh, 
I'm going to paint specifically in areas with this with this water and this paint, right? Okay. So like those areas and this area and this area. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll paint this area, right? I'm going to... Okay, and what's going to happen is, okay, in the cheeks, the forehead, the nose, and the lower mouth. But because it's thin, what it's going to do is it's going to dry and it's going to allow some of the brown to shine through. And then I'm going to continue doing this, making those gaps smaller and smaller. So like my next coat will be there and then the next coat will be there, you know, kind of like that. And then I'm going to gradually reduce the amount of the circle, right? They're not nipples. Okay. And what that'll do is it will gradually get lighter and lighter and lighter until you get the raised areas are super light, right? Okay, perfect. And then, and then we'll go back and highlight. So let's go ahead and start with our base layer. I'm going to take medium flesh. I'm going to put one drop down at the bottom of my palette. And then I'm going to add water. And I'm looking at the amount, the size of that bubble. And I'm going to try to make two bubbles about that same size. Like that's one, and that's two. A good mix of water and paint. And then I experiment on the palette. Good, it doesn't run. If it was runny, then it would be too thin. All right, so here comes the moment of truth. See how thin that is? That's a two to one. And I'm painting pretty much along the muscles. It looks wet. Well, guess what? It's two to one paint. Now, in this case, I do want some of that to go down into the cracks. Because I want it to disguise a little bit of that brown. I'm almost watching it, actually. Almost. Let's do the back. I know there's a couple of stripes right here. A couple of stripes right there. You notice how on these arms, it looks... like I painted the whole thing. Okay. But I'm just spreading it out. Okay. Now this isn't going to dry like this. This is because it's wet. It's mostly water. You can see the the body of the a model starting to shine through. Oh yeah, don't forget the face. And the hands. Okay, so now I take my brush and I clean almost everything off of it. 
And I'm going to go back in here and soak up the puddles. And I'm, I'm, the puddles that I'm really looking at are the ones that fell into the cracks. I want them in the cracks, but I don't want them puddling up in the cracks. Good. Now you can see that that's gotten a little bit lighter. It's a little wet. Okay. Now we're going to let that dry for just a little bit. Not very much. Maybe two or three minutes. I'll be right back. All right. Now on this model, I've switched to a smaller brush. This is a 10-0 brush. Uh, sharper point because of specifically the stomach muscles and things like that. Uh, now on your paint, you're going to have to experiment. I would take a couple of models and experiment before you actually commit to your paint scheme. That way you will know what kind of consistency your paint needs to be all right so you can kind of see how certain areas are becoming a little bit more defined and I remember I'm deliberately leaving areas uncovered allowing the darker brown underneath to shine through okay that white is causing a backlight effect meaning you're not able to actually see the color of the I think the camera was doing a little backlight automatic backlighting so it was And I'm not doing adjacent places one after another. I Like I'll do that one and then I'll do that one. Then I'll come back over here. Maybe the back of the hand. Maybe the trapezius. Or is that a tricep? That's a tricep. Lats. Now, if your if your model doesn't have a whole lot of definition of the muscles, like he's not like Muscle Man, or he's not uh, you know he's not a bodybuilder or whatever or they're wearing robes or whatever, something like that, then you won't necessarily need to do all these muscles. And again, remember, see, look how that's darkened up. But when I put it on, it was this bright. Okay. A 
to do the love handles. There's a spot right there. Okay, now when you're talking about time, this is going to be your most time consuming portion of painting flesh. Again, this don't really have to do the fist because I'm gluing it to a shield. But I'm going to I'm going to mess with it just so you can see it. And you can see this is like the third coat Well, one, I let dry for a minute or two. And then two and three, I'm doing back to back. Don't panic too much if you paint too much. Because, like I said, it's going to darken up now the face. Cheeks, lower lip, nose. Because he has a helmet, there's none of that really top forehead kind of kind of look. Okay, that looks dark right now, but as it dries, it's going to darken up. And you don't want to leave lines like this on your muscles. You're going to want to fix that. What I'm saying is you don't want a line going right down the middle of one of your muscles. And you notice I'm non-stop painting. I'm not... Uh, I'm not um, taking a break, giving it a few minutes to dry, and then coming back. This is all painting together. I think I missed a spot right there. Now, a note about skin tone. Uh, not every person has the same skin tone. I mean, like these guys are Gaul, right? So they're French. Not every French warrior has exactly the same skin tone. So if you do one a little bit darker than the next, it's okay. Don't panic. One guy was just in the sun more than the other. Or he's got different heritage. Maybe he was in North Gaul and the other guy was in South Gaul. I know that most Gaul warriors in this time frame, we're all fighting from the same community. So, that, that wouldn't really be the case. There wouldn't be North Gaul, South Gaul in, a, in the same unit. That's why I like to paint a whole unit at one sitting. That way, they all get the same type of attention. Now we're back to the face again. I 
Luckily at this scale you don't really have to do nipples. And even if there was nipples, I wouldn't do them. Not when I'm trying to paint 40 Gallic warriors in one sitting. My war bands, I got two war bands that I'm painting right now, and they're both 20 men. And yes, I did this on the Romans. And they came out looking really good. I was, I was really pleased with that experiment. So I think this might be the fourth layer. And you can kind of see I'm gradually building it up. Now, one thing that this will do, because the paint is so wet, I mean, it's literally, it's two parts water. Because of that, as it dries, you don't get any brush strokes. There will not be one brush stroke. I mean, there can be mistakes, of course, and there can be areas you miss. But most likely, you're not going to miss it because you're going over it four, five, six times. I think I'm getting really close to the tone that I'm looking for. I won't really know until it dries. On that face, all I do is touch the nose, cheeks, and the lower lip. And remember, with each one of these uh, layers, I'm making them smaller and smaller, or I'm, I'm, maybe not smaller is not the word. I'm leaving a bigger and bigger gap. To the inside. Now look at that stomach, how pronounced that is. Wouldn't you like to have, what is that, an eight pack? <laughs> it's not even a six pack. Okay. A couple of things that are super important to get right is the face and the hands. The hands are something that a lot of people uh, neglect or they just use a wash and just let it go. But if you get the hands right, it'll do, um, it'll do a lot of things to make your model look realistic. All right, I think we are almost there. See, this guy looks suntanned, right? I mean, he looks he looks good, and I probably could field him just like this.
All right, so we're going to leave this guy to dry before I move on to the next flavor. Okay, so we're going to let that set for a minute. Let it, let it dry, let it darken up, and then we'll be right back. All right, so now the next step is, this is a little tricky. We're going to do skin tone, but we're not going to go straight skin tone. See the flesh tone that I've already got? Uh, that quantity was kind of planned uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to drop in one drop. This dropper is a little large, uh, so I'm going to try to make it a small drop like that. And now because it's got two paint to water that's one to one I don't like that so we're going to add just a little bit more water okay gonna go brown for a second but the more you stir and the more you mix that skin tone is going to blend in with the paint and it's going to lighten it up don't use white white uh, is too stark of a difference. Try not to mix blacks and whites with your paints uh, unless you're really going for a huge difference. If you just want a subtle difference, then just use a subtle difference. Okay, so we went like that. It doesn't look much different. That still looks suntanned. Let's go ahead and get that more off the camera there's our model now this is what we do but that's okay we're going to do you see the different you can barely see the difference there that's good. You don't want it to be a huge, major jump. And I'm specifically doing uh, any of the muscles that I think are well defined. So we got the arms, biceps, And again, remember, because there's so much water in this paint, there should not be any brush strokes. If you dry brush, you notice that what you do is you normally co coat your brush in paint and then you wipe off all the liquid. And then you drag your brush across the raised areas and the paint paint that's drying on your brush that's almost completely dry sticks to your model and what you'll see is brush streaks and 
because you're putting a dry paint onto your model, it'll show up as kind of a chalky color. Texture, not color. Okay. This guy's starting to look really good. All right, now the fingers, you want to you want to make sure you get the lighter tone on the fingers as well. And now I'm just coating the middle portions of each of the defined muscles. Oh yeah, his face. I always forget to do the face. But the face needs its own layering as well. All right, and that was pretty much it. Now I'm going to let this guy dry for a minute, and then we'll come back and kind of take a look at what it looks like after he's dried. All right, see you in a minute. All right, so we got him finished. Go ahead and uh, pull him in close so you can kind of see what he looks like. All right, so I went ahead and finished him up. Got his pants done, his sheath. I guess his shorts or he's got it along his waist or whatever. His helmet, his hair, his necklaces. Tell me what you think. Do you think that's a pretty cool way to do the flesh? Do you have a different way? I need to go ahead and finish up my barbarians. All right, I'll see you next time.